WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're doing overhead stick welding, and this is tips for a 4G plate test. So here's here's something that's happened to me before, so I want to talk about it a little bit. For overhead tests like this, I used to I used to do a lot of this this number here. I put the rod in there just like that. I chuck it up here just like this. I I'd, I'd be all propped and nice and good. I have my hands all locked in here <laughs> like this, and that things would just be going perfect. And then all of a sudden, a big ball of, of fire comes down and lands right in this little, and look at all the little nooks and crannies right in there where fire can stick, all right? Big ball of fire comes down here, and you're almost to the end of your rod, and you're a son of a gun, that's getting hot, I can make it, I can make it, I can make it, and you make it, and then you got a half dollar size blister on your, on your knuckle, it gets infected, and hurts like a mug for the next three months, no good, no bueno. Just by changing things up a little bit, instead of doing that, maybe putting the rod in there like this and holding holding it like this. That way, that way, when the fire comes down, it's just going to bounce off and probably won't hit you anyway. So that's a tip for you. One more thing also is that when you're doing that, I've done this before plenty of times. <laughs> Even while I was filming this video, I did this. So this is something to always think about. Think about where your feet are. You know, there's nothing worse than, than to have that root pass going in just like you want it, and all of a sudden. You're stepping, you're stepping on your lead, and you didn't really notice it, and you can't feed the rod anymore, and you, and you're and you're out of balance where you can't pick your foot up off your lead, and you're just you're just kind of you got that perfect root going in there, and it just screws everything up. So pay attention to where your hands are in relation to where the fire is coming. Pay attention to where your feet are. Make sure you're not stepping on your lead. Also, it goes without saying, you're gonna wear you're gonna want to wear something with leather sleeves designed for overhead welding. The first thing I'm going to do is position this piece to the right height and I'm using a stand from Triangle Engineering. I like the I like the actual plate to be just about at the top of my head, so just a little bit above eye level gives me a good line of sight on it. That's a personal preference. Some people will want it higher, some people want it lower. And now I'm going to take a, a few dry runs here, like I always try to do, make sure I'm not standing on my lead again. You can see I'm, I've got just a little bit of a drag angle going straight up and down. 90 degrees works pretty well too. And just like with vertical welding, when you think you're straight up and down, you'll probably have a little slight drag angle and that'll be fine. This is what I talked about earlier about not having my hands positioned where when the balls of fire drop down, it won't get caught on my gloves and cause me to stop a bead prematurely. Doing just a slight oscillation. This also can be done with two passes on the root pass. Some tests actually require that, uh, maybe running 332nd rods, uh, one on each side, but I'm doing just one pass here today with a 1 8 electrode. That's 3.2 millimeter. Also, you can kind of stabilize your rod with a second hand like this for restarts. What I do is I'll get it started, and then gradually as things start going well, I'll gradually move my hand down and gradually completely release it to where I can feed the rod without, you know, because that rod gets hot. So if you've got a, a glove on that hand and, and you're holding it the whole time, it kind of can get annoying. Another quick shot of the root pass here, keeping a tight arc. Lot not jammed in there to where you can, you know, snuff out the arc, but a tight arc. And that leaves me with a pretty big root pass, which is what I wanted, because that, that'll let me only put two passes in there and fill it up. And you can kind of see how low I am after the root pass. About an eighth of an inch below flush, a little bit more than an eighth of an inch below flush is where I am now. So two more passes uh, will fill that up. Now the first one is stacked halfway over the root pass and just barely coming out to the edge of the bevel there. Again paying attention to rod angle and arc length, keeping a nice tight arc. I'm about at 120 to 125 amps right here. Now we'll put in that second pass after we take a quick look at, at where we are. Okay, now you see how there's plenty of room there to get the next bead in there. That's very important. Always plan one bead ahead. Leave yourself enough room to where you can penetrate that bead. 
if you stack the bead over too far, it makes it very difficult to get your rod in there and penetrate like you need to. I've got plenty of room on this and that's a good thing. I'm doing very slight manipulation of the electrode, just a little bit of side to side, not much at all. Some tests are very strict on how much you can manipulate the electrode, how wide the bead can be, so you're going to have to pay attention to that. Be prepared to run stringers with no motion at all. I'm in pretty good shape for a cover pass now. I've just got a little, little slight little valley right next to that bead right there, but I should be in good shape for the cover pass, and we'll do that now. The first bead on the cover pass, you want to overlap the bevel just by a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. Don't go too wide out there. There are some tests administrators that are, are very strict on how wide you go outside the bevel. Second pass, got it kind of blocked with my, with my glove here. The camera barely picked it up, but you want to overlap the first pass by about halfway and leave plenty of room for that last pass, which in this case there wasn't any groove or valley to fill up, so it doesn't really matter. And again, for this last pass here, you can turn the machine down 5 or 10 amps, maybe, because really all you're doing is running a bead on plate there. But if things are going well, just leave the heat, leave the amperage alone. Alright, well that's the three bead cover pass. Now the same tips that apply for this test and that is setting that machine hot enough where the rod won't stick when you hold a tight arc and then hold a tight arc. That applies to just about any overhead welding, especially with 7018. So whether you're climbing underneath a trailer and welding some kind of bracket on or, or a piece of heavy equipment or whatever, same things apply. You, know, you want to you have it set almost as hot as you would welding flat or horizontal and you want to keep that arc length tight because even, even though it looks like you're right in the puddle, you have an arc length because the rod is burning up inside the little cone of flux around it. So that's the best advice I could give you. Use enough amperage that when you hold a tight arc, it won't stick, then hold a tight arc. Also, plan one bead ahead, always to leave room for that next bead. Well, that's all I got today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.